Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Fort has rubbished claims that the recently imposed the states of emergency in several parishes were not valid because the regulations were not tabled in Parliament. States of emergency were declared in St. Anne, Clarendon, St. Catherine, specified areas of Kingston and St. Andrew, St. James, Westmoreland and Hanover last Monday. The regulations were tabled in the Senate on Friday and in Parliament today. Stakeholders had questioned whether the emergency powers were valid as at December 6, since there was no regulation in force. Speaking on the issue of the late tabling, Mrs. Malahu Ford said a misstatement on the law in the public sphere had misled citizens about when the emergency regulations took effect. Madam Speaker, the validity of the regulations was brought into question because it was reportedly said that until and unless... In other words, the regulations were tabled in the Parliament, they were of no legal effect. I should like to advise that the regulations in question were promulgated by the Governor-General pursuant to power to do so, granted by Parliament under Section 3 of the Emergency Powers Act. In so far as is relevant, the law provides, during a period of public emergency, It shall be lawful for the Governor-General, by order, to make regulations for securing the essentials of life to the community, and those regulations may confer or impose on any government department or any other person a number of powers, Madam Speaker. The law goes on to say that any regulation so made shall be laid before the Senate and the House of Representatives as soon as may be after they are made and shall not continue in force after the expiration of seven days from the time when they are so laid before the Senate or the House of Representatives, whichever shall be later unless a resolution is passed by the Senate or House of Representatives providing for the continuation. Madam Speaker, the regulations do not require any affirmative or negative resolution to comments as some other laws require. The Emergency Powers Act provides for the making of these types of regulations by the executive, the Governor General, not to the legislature, Parliament, because the legislature has delegated that subsidiary lawmaking power to the executive. In response to Minister Malahu Ford's statement, Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Weston, Anthony Hilton, noted that clarity was needed on the SOE regulations. He suggested that there are still questions surrounding the regulations and how they work. Until I've seen and read this statement, I was not of that understanding either. And I believe that the fact that this statement had to be made in the context of what has been said by the eminent constitutional lawyer and others, that it speaks to the fact that the clarity is needed. The questions, because the statements made are generally accepted that regulations are subsidiary legislation and that in the main act of the law, it provides for the making of these regulations. It is not my understanding previously that all that needs to happen is that it is gazetted and laid on the table unless the the legislation so specifically provides. Mr. Hilton noted that it has been the practice that the regulations are debated and discussed prior to implementation. Even in respect of this matter, there could be and may well have been an expectation that this matter would have been discussed and debated. So I believe that it's going to raise and continue to raise some questions as to A, whether the Emergency Powers Act are effective without the tabling and raises the quest, secondary question as to when it commences. If it turns out that the Honorable Minister is correct, then it's a matter of, it's a moment of learning. It's a teaching moment for all of us. Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Weston, Anthony Hilton.
Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson has criticized the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, for its recent report on fatal shootings by the police. In the report last week, Indicom said there were some 126 fatal shootings between January and November this year. It also expressed concern that police officers were involved in many of the shootings. However, the police chief has taken issue with Indicom's report. Speaking at the St. Catherine North Divisional Awards Ceremony today, Major General Anderson said in many cases, Indicom's reports on fatal shootings do not provide enough context. So here we have an officer, part of a team, who intercepts somebody with a high-powered weapon, move on from there, having gotten into information. So the person who's intercepted is arrested with the high-powered weapon. Not shot. It wasn't a threat. They didn't need to be shot. And they moved on to another person who has been a problem in terms of his shooting of persons and shooting at the police. Charged, got bail, and is out there shooting again. So you have a confrontation. We have an officer shot, officer down, and he's shot and killed. The, 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 um, the gunman, renowned gunman. When this story comes out later in a report, you're going to hear man fatally shot. That's the story. No context, no mention of the police officer who has been injured. Nothing. Just another fatal shooting by the JCF. No, that is... In my mind, dishonest, and I'm going to push back hard at this. It's not a narrative that I'm going to allow to stand, so I will be pushing back very hard on this nonsense. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson. An American national who was arrested at the Sangster International Airport yesterday and later charged for firearms-related offenses was fined $30,000 or 30 days in prison when he appeared in the Western Regional Gun Court today. He is 27-year-old Auden Caton, an electrical linesman of Mount Holly, North Carolina, in the United States. Reports are that about 1.56 p.m., Caton was going through the security checkpoint at the airport Airport. When his knapsack was scanned and oddities were detected, the police were alerted and the bag was searched. Two 9mm cartridges were found. Caton was arrested and charged with illegal possession of ammunition. The prosecution withdrew forgery charges against retired business executive and accountant Jeffrey Masado when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court yesterday. He was charged jointly with his wife, disbarred attorney at law Jennifer Masado. Two other charges are pending. The opposition has expressed concern about what it says are conflicting statements being made by the Minister of Finance regarding the rollout of the new public sector compensation program. According to opposition spokesman on finance and planning Julian Robinson, public servants are unclear if the government will be reclaiming monies already paid out, leaving them worse off than they were before, especially ahead of the Christmas season. In a statement this afternoon, Mr. Robinson said on November 22 this year, the Minister of Finance assured Parliament that allowances paid from April to November 2022 would not be recovered by the government. He said the minister's promise was reaffirmed in a release on November 24. However, Mr. Robinson said a circular issued on December 10 by the ministry indicated that discontinued allowances paid from April to November this year would be recovered. The opposition spokesman said the issue must be clarified. There is conflict in information which is coming from the Ministry of Finance. In one case, the Minister of Finance on two occasions publicly stated that they would not be clawing back the allowances that were paid to workers. And now there's a circular from the Ministry of Finance which says the opposite. That has led to a lot of apprehension and anxiety among public servants, in particular travelling officers who receive a significant part of their remuneration in travelling allowances which are non-taxable. What we don't know at this stage, which is a week away from payments being made, is whether people are going to be worse off when those allowances have been clawed back, even when they receive the retroactive pay for the nine months. Mr. Robinson is calling for full transparency and disclosure of the terms and conditions of the new compensation review package. So we are calling for 
full transparency and disclosure of the entire public sector compensation package so that people know what they are going to receive and people can plan. Right now what is happening is that information is coming out on a piecemeal basis and that you have conflicting information and that there's going to be a breakdown of trust because what is being said by the minister is different from what is taking place in reality. Opposition spokesman on finance and planning, Julian Robinson. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the National Identification System, NIDS, will be rolled out in various phases. Phase 1, the technical pilot for NIDS, was launched today and will be followed by the national rollout. The Prime Minister explains that at the same time, Work is underway to establish the National Identification and Registration Authority, which will manage NIDS. Mr. Holness explains the importance of the pilot phase. The technical pilot is a very important phase, and today we launch a process to test drive all the processes and subsystems that we have been developing in the last three years. During the pilot, it is of significance that we will move to obtain the International Civil Aviation Organizations, the ICAO certification. The Jamaica National Identification Card will therefore follow the international standards for digital identity enacted by ICAO. He says the National Identification Card will be cutting edge, meeting the most widely used international standards, adding that the card will have the highest level of security and data protection. In addition, the system itself has built-in mechanisms to ensure that identity verification is detected and shared with the data owner for transparency. So if somebody seeks to verify who you are, checks in on your record, you are notified. And that is the ultimate form of protecting the data and ensuring transparency. So you know who is checking on your identity. The encryption of data, separation of the data, and the collection of minimum data. In other words, we are only collecting what we need to verify your identity. And this is in itself a form of guarantee that minimizes the exposure of your data, any breach of data, or any invasion of privacy. Prime Minister Andrew Holness. He also highlighted the importance of consent, stating that individuals must give permission for their identity to be verified. Mr. Holness added that the government has put in place a framework to protect the data collected under NIDS and embedded into law serious consequences for data breaches. NIDS is subject to the Data Protection Act. 24 post offices will be retrofitted to serve as enrollment centers. The facilities will be outfitted with high-speed internet and technological devices to accommodate the enrollment.